welcome dear students in this video i will discuss about equivalent systems of forces for rigid bodies so let us start it is not as always possible to consider the body as a single particle because sometimes body has a large dimension suppose like this and suppose the force is acting here so you cannot always consider this as a single particle sometimes when suppose the size of body is not very large suppose this body so this one body can be considered as a single particle but sometimes size do matter for example in case of trains so trains has a very large size so you cannot consider them as a single particle or for example airplanes big airplanes so in that case we need to consider the size of the body also and the specific points of application of the forces this is also important because as you can see if the force is applied here then it will have some different consequence and if this force is applied here then it will have different consequences so this is also important to uh, the point of application of the force now most bodies in elementary mechanics are assumed to be rigid so this is also very important point so suppose this is the body so if a force is acting on this body then it is possible that because of the force so this body might deform okay and shape changes but in the rigid body mechanics we consider that this body will remain rigid means before the application of the force and after the application of the force the size of the body will remain same means if f is zero then also it will the uh, size is same and if we have some f value then also the size is same sorry shape is same so that means that there is no deformations external deformations are small or they do not affect the conditions of equilibrium or motion of the body now in this video we will discuss the effect of forces exerted on a rigid body so if there is a rigid body suppose and different forces are acting on this body say this is f1 say this is f2 f3 f4 and so on so we will consider the effect of all these forces and we will replace all these forces by a single resultant force okay so what we will do uh, we will replace with a system consisting a moment of a force about a point moment of a force about an axis and moment due to couple so by this we will replace now any system of forces any system of forces acting on a rigid body can be replaced by an equivalent system consisting of one force and one couple so suppose this is the system f1 f2 f3 f4 acting on this body then this can be replaced by a one resultant force and one couple so this is possible so this we will learn in this chapter okay now uh, here you can see external and internal forces so if there is a rigid body as seen in the, here this is the rigid body so this body is having some internal forces means uh, every body is made up of say different molecules okay so every molecule has force of attraction or forces of repulsion and some other forces also so every body has some internal forces and some external forces okay so 
generally we do not deal with internal forces in our course of this engineering mechanics we will be dealing with only external forces okay so in this body what are the external forces that are acting so this is the one force f so this is f and then this weight of the body which is acting downward so this is the first force this is the second say and uh, this body is in contact with the surface at two points here and here so we have two reaction forces so this is suppose three and this is suppose four so in this uh, body four forces four external forces are acting so these forces we will consider and we will resolve these forces into a resultant force and a couple about a point while we do not concern about internal forces okay now if an opposed each external force can impart a motion of translation or rotation okay so this force these external forces if they are not in equilibrium then what they can do they can impart some motion to the body and the motion can be translation means motion in the uh, linear direction or the motion can be a rotating means there could can be a rotating motion also okay now when we are reducing the resultant forces into a force and couple then this principle principle of transmissibility is very very important or we also call it equivalent forces so what this principle says that it says there's conditions of equilibrium or motion are not affected by transmitting a force along its line of action okay so this is the body and this f force is acting in this direction and this is the line of action of this force okay this is the line of action so according to the principle of transmissibility along this line along this line of action we can uh, change the position of the applied force though so this f and this f dash if they are having the same magnitude and uh, they will have the same effect okay means they are the equivalent forces their effect will remain same okay now by using this principle consider this figure so what we can do we can move this force this is the force so suppose this is the line of action this is the line of action okay so by using the principle of transmissibility transmissibility this force can be transferred here okay uh, f dash okay so this is what shown in this figure so by using the principle of transmissibility we can move the force along the line of action and its effect will remain same okay now similarly the same thing is done here so this force p2 it is transmitted at this point similarly this uh, force p2 it is transmitted at this point okay so but the principle of transmissibility may not always apply in determining internal forces and deformations okay so you can determine the uh, motion or external effect of the forces but you cannot determine the internal effect okay uh, because uh, these forces and uh, these forces they will have say uh, means different uh, deformations and effect okay because these forces will pull uh, this forces will pull this side this forces will pull this side so there is some tension effect 
while the same thing is not there in this case okay because this side is now free okay so there will be no pulling effect so that thing we cannot able to determine but in certain applications the principle of transmissibility is uh, very very useful okay and when you will solve the problems then you will see that you can apply principle of transmissibility in many problems and it is really useful okay vector product of two vectors so this you might have studied in your physics classes so let us revise this concept again concept of the moment of a force about a point is more easily understood through applications of the vector product so when you are calculating the moment of force about a point then for that uh, for uh, calculating this you need to understand the vector products so as you can see in the figure that if there are two vectors p and q so this is the p vector and this is the q vector okay and uh, there is an angle theta between both the vectors then their product vector product which is uh, often represented by p cross q okay so suppose we denote this by v so vector product of both the vectors will be pointing in the plane normal to the plane containing the vector so this is the plane which contains vectors p and q so the do vector product will be outside this plane okay normal to this plane means this angle should be 90 degrees so this product will be perpendicular and pointing outward okay while the magnitude of this you can calculate by this formula p magnitude of p into magnitude of q and multiply that by sin theta while the direction you can calculate by the right hand rule so when you curl your fingers from p to q so here is p from p to q you will curl your fingers okay then the direction of this will be given by your thumb the direction of your thumb will give the direction of the resultant vector now there are certain uh, properties of vector products first one is they are not commutative okay so if you are taking the cross product of two vectors then they are not commutative means if this is the p cross q then q cross p will be in the downward direction okay then they are distributive so you can apply the distributive law in vector products and they are not associative okay so associativity law you cannot apply to the vector product so you should always keep in mind these things whenever you are doing the vector products now since we are dealing with the forces and displacements and uh, we will be taking the components and we know that i is the unit vector in x direction and j is the unit vector in y direction and k is the unit vector in z direction okay so let us see what will happen if we take the vector product of i cross i so in case of i cross i i cross i means 1 into 1 into sine of 0 because the angle between the same vector is 0 so this is 0 okay similarly if you take i cross j then you will obtain k because this will be in the di this direction then i cross k will be minus j similarly you can obtain j cross i okay similarly j cross j will be 0 so if you are multiplying the vector with the same vector then the product will be zero 
and if you multiplying by say i cross j then you will obtain k so similarly you can find the vector products of all the unit vectors okay now vector product in terms of the rectangular coordinates okay so suppose there are two vectors p and your p vector is pxi plus pyj plus pz k and similarly you have q which is equals to qxi plus qyj plus qz k so these vectors and they can be represented through their components and you want to find out the vector products of these two vectors so this is what you get when you multiply okay so when you take the product of this so this will zero because same vector then you multiply by this so okay and then you multiply by this okay similarly all other terms and take the term with having same directions common then you will find that the vector product will be py qz minus puz qy into i then pz qx minus px qz j and px qy minus py qx into k so this you can obtain when you take the vector products of p and q or more easily means in uh, easy form to remember you can write in the form of a determinant so on the top of the uh, determinant you can write i j k then p x p y p z q x q y q z okay so when you take i say i then i in i direction we have p y q z these two minus this p z q y so you can easily remember this vector product by remembering this a force vector is defined by its magnitude and direction as we have seen in the previous lectures now its effect on the rigid body also depend on its point of application so as you can see in this figure this is the force vector and the point of application is a okay now if this point of application is changed say here or anybody means anywhere in the surface then its effect will be different okay so the effect of this force will also depend on this point of application now the moment of this force which is applied on a about o o is the axis of this body is defined as m o m is the moment and moment is about o so this o is representing the point about which we are calculating the moment so m o will be equal to r cross f where r is the distance between the point of application and the axis okay so r cross f is the moment of f about o and this moment vector m o is perpendicular to the plane containing o and the force f so suppose we draw a plane as you can see by this blue color that this is the plane which is passing through o as well as this f so if this is the case uh, then the resultant mo is perpendicular to this plane okay as we have seen in the cross product of vectors so 
same as the case here okay so mo is perpendicular to this plane containing o and f and uh, the magnitude of mo you can measure by this equation mo will be equal to r into f into sin theta where theta is the angle between f and the displacement vector oa okay so this is the angle theta while r is the magnitude of this displacement and f is the magnitude of this force while the direction of this moment you can calculate by the right hand thumb rule okay right hand rule so when you move from this uh, in this direction from here to here okay then uh, the direction of the moment will be given by your thumb okay as we can have seen in the case of vector product so if uh, you are moving from this to this point then the thumb will give you the direction of the moment any force f dash so suppose we apply any other force f dash that has the same magnitude as direction as f so we apply any other force f dash which is having the same direction and same magnitude so that force is equivalent if it also has the same line of action so if the force is applied along this line this line so that force will also have the same uh, effect okay the, uh, that means it will give the same moment okay now consider the two dimensional structure two dimensional structures are those that have length and breadth but negligible depth so suppose this is the 2d structure which do not have much breadth okay and uh, we have this plane point o and the force is applied in the same plane f so the moment of uh, this force is m naught and by the right hand rule the moment vector will be out of this plane okay now the force tends to rotate the structure clockwise means uh, uh, the way in which clock rotates okay sorry anti-clockwise anti-clockwise this is the anti-clockwise uh, you can see and this is the anti-clockwise okay then uh, the moment vector is out of the plane of the structure and the magnitude is positive so for anti-clockwise case we consider that the m naught is positive while if the force tends to rotate the clockwise so this is the clockwise okay so then we consider that the moment of the force is negative and it will point into the downward direction okay so uh, while in this case the moment vector will point in the upward direction okay so this is how you can calculate the moment for a 2d case now let us see varignon's theorem this theorem is very important it, uh, this theorem says that the moment about a given point O of the resultant of several concurrent forces. Suppose we are having several concurrent forces F1, F2, F3, F4 and these forces are concurrent means they are passing through the same point. And then the moment of these forces about this point is equal to the sum of the moments of the various moments about the same point okay means uh, moment of the resultant you can write on the rhs oh, sorry left uh, left hand side r cross here in this bracket this is the resultant will be equals to 
R cross F1 means moment of this force plus R cross F2 means moment of this force plus moment of this force plus moment of this force and so on. Okay. So by using Verignon's theorem, you can write in this way. And Verignon theorem makes it possible to replace the direct determinations of the moment of force by the moment of two or more components of force. So suppose if, you, if there is a force, then instead of calculating the moment or directly, you, what you can do, you can break the force into components, say X and Y and Z components, and then you can calculate the moment of each component and then simply add that, then you will get the total moment. Now let us see the rectangular components of the moments of a force about O means origin. So for this is the force F and these are the three components of the force Fxi, Fyj and Fzk and we have to calculate the moment of this force about the point O which is also the origin. Okay. So as you, uh, you know that moment about origin or can be calculated by this cross product R cross F. Now this R vector you can simply write because the coordinates of this point is X, Y, Z. So you can write R vector as X, I plus Y, J plus Z, K. And similarly, you know the components of the force. So you can write F as F, X, I, F, Y, J and F, Z, K. Then this moment vector mxi plus myj plus mzk will be simply equals to the cross product which we can also write in the form of determinant so that you can easily remember it. So in the first row you will write ijk, in the second row you will write the displacement vector x, y and j and in the third row you will write the components of force that is fx, fy and fj. And then what you need to do, you simply open this determinant and you will get this YFZ minus ZFYI and so on. So this is how you can calculate the moment about the origin. Now we will see if we have to calculate the moment of force about at point B, which is not at the origin, which is slightly different from the origin. So that uh, moment about B will be equals to RAB, where A is the point of application and B is the point at which we want to calculate the moment. So we will write R A cross B, sorry, A slash B cross F. Now we need to write this R A slash B. So R A slash B can be written as position vector of A minus position vector of B. So that will be equals to X A minus X B I plus Y A minus Y B J plus Z A minus Z B K. And this force you simply write F X I plus F Y J plus F Z K. Now for calculating the moment you simply write these two vectors in the form of determinant. So in the first row ijk, in the second row uh, this components of position vector and in the third row components of force vector. And when you open this determinant you can calculate the moment of force f or moment of this force f about point b. Now we'll see the rectangular components of the moment of force for a 2D structure. So this is your 2D structure, okay, and this is the force F. It has two components, Fx, I and Fyj. Then your moment will be this, X, Fy minus Y, Fz, because other two terms will vanish, okay. So as you can see, this is the term which we have operated previously. For 3D case, now this term will vanish out because this fz is 0, z is 0, okay. Again in this case, this z is 0, fz is 0. 
so only this term will left out okay so it, your moment will be x f y minus y f x and it will be in the k direction and similarly you can obtain the moment about a point b which is different from the origin okay as in this case so in this in that case you will simply replace this x and y by x i a minus x b and y a minus y b so this is how you can calculate the moment for a 2d structure So this you might have studied in your physics classes. So here we are having two vectors P and Q and uh, theta is the angle between two vectors. Then scalar product or dot product between P and Q is written as P dot Q and it is equals to P Q cos theta now scalar product has some properties like scalar product is commutative that is p dot q and q dot p is the same unlike the vector product then scalar product is distributive so if you have two vectors q1 plus q2 and uh, then you, if you want to take the dot product of p dot the sum then it will be same as p dot q1 plus p dot q2 but it is not associative okay so p dot q dot s will not be equal to p dot q dot s okay so these are some of the properties of scalar products now let us do the scalar product with some Cartesian components. So suppose you are having two vectors P which is PXI plus PYJ plus PZK then vector Q is QXI plus QYJ plus QZK. Now first we need to know the scalar products of unit vectors. So suppose you have i dot i, then i dot i means 1 into 1 into cos 0 and cos 0 is 1. So i dot i will be 1. Similarly j dot j is 1, k dot k is 1. Now i dot j means when you are multiplying the two unit vectors that are perpendicular to each other, then since cos 90 is 0, so i dot j is 0. Similarly, j dot z is, uh, j dot k is 0 and k dot i is 0. <coughs> now, when you open these brackets, so suppose let us take this. So, px will be multiplied with this qx and then qy and qz. So, i dot i will be 1. So, px, qx you will get and then i dot j this will be 0 i dot k this will be 0 so two terms will be 0 similarly from the second term by multiplying this and uh, this one you will get second term and similarly the third term then your p dot q will be p x q x plus p y q y plus p z q z so you can say that when you are taking the dot product of or scalar product of two vectors then they are simply the multiplication of the components in the same direction okay similarly p dot p that is when you are multiplying the vector with its uh, itself 
then it will be simply the square of the component in each direction. Now we will uh, see some of the applications of uh, scalar products of vectors. So again, these are the two vectors P and Q and the angle between them is theta. Then P dot Q is PQ cos theta as we have already seen, which is equals to px qx plus py qy plus pz qz. Now from this you can find the angle between them that is cos theta will be equals to this px qx plus py qy plus pz qz divided by pq. That means if you know the components of the two vectors uh, and the two vectors then you can find the angle between the two vectors by this now one more thing <coughs> suppose you want the projection of this vector p on this axis o l okay so projection of a vector on a given axis this thing you need uh, when you are solving engineering mechanics problem so sometime you need to project the vector on a particular axis so that you can study the effect of that vector on that along that particular axis okay so this uh, projection will be p o l so we denote this projection by p o l then that will be equals to p cos theta okay now you can find this p dot q will be p q cos theta we already know this and uh, when we divide this by q then on the rhs you get p cos theta which is simply the projection of P along the OL. So if you want to find the projection of P along this line, then what you need to do, you need to simply take the scalar product and divide it by the uh, vector along which you are taking the projection. Okay. Then uh, suppose you want to project the vector P along this line OL once again but this time you know the unit vector lambda along OL so in this case you <coughs> are projecting along Q uh, but uh, here you are projecting uh, in the direction of OL where you know the unit vector okay so that is very simple POL will be P dot delta uh, where sorry we p dot lambda and uh, this lambda we already know that it is given by cos theta xi plus cos theta yj plus cos theta zk and p is px py plus pz so simply you need to multiply because we are taking the dot product so we need to simply multiply the components that is px cos theta x plus py cos theta y plus pz cos theta z. So this is how you can take the projection along any axis for which you know the unit vector. Now let us see sometimes you need the uh, mixed triple products that is you want to calculate dot product as well as the cross product. So these are the three vectors. P, Q and S and we want to take the mixed triple product of uh, these three vectors that is S dot P plus Q. So this is the scalar one okay because uh, P cross Q is the vector and this is the vector and when we take the dot product of two vectors then it is the scalar. So answer will be the scalar. Now suppose you are having these three vectors so there are multiple combinations that are possible so there are six combinations that are possible so when you take the mixed triple product the magnitude will remain same in all these combinations okay so whether you are taking s dot uh, s dot p uh, cross q or p dot q cross s or anything any any combination the magnitude will remain same but sign changes so this is what 
you will get when you try so there are three cases which are having a positive magnitude and there are three cases which are having the negative magnitude okay now uh, suppose take the exam uh, example say take three vectors p as p x plus q x plus p z then q is q x q y q z then s is s x s y and s z and if you do the mixed triple product then you will get this and this is equals to the determinant okay so whenever you are taking the mixed triple product what you need to do you simply take the determinant of the components in x y and z directions so that is very very simple okay Now we already know that moment of a force about a point O is given as MO which is simply the cross product of the displacement vector at which the force is applied with the force. Now you want to calculate the scalar moment MOL means we want to calculate the moment of force about this axis okay we know about this point now we want to calculate about this axis so suppose this lambda is the unit vector in the direction of ol and your this is mo so if you want to calculate the scalar moment then this is simply the projection of mo on the ol and you can calculate the projection by simply taking the dot product of two that is lambda dot m o which is equals to lambda dot r cross f okay now similarly we can calculate the moments of f about the coordinate axes x y and z and this again you can also do by simply doing the dot product and you will get these expressions that is mx will be equals to y f z minus z f y m y will be equals to z f x minus x f z and m z is equal to x f y minus y f x now suppose you want to calculate the moment of a force about uh, some arbitrary axis that is suppose this is your force f applied at point a and this is the origin and we want to calculate the moment of this force about this axis okay so suppose uh, we denote this axis by bl okay then mbl will be equals to the unit vector along this axis that is lambda and, and dot product of mb means the moment of this force about point b now moment of force about point B can be calculated simply by R uh, AB that is position vector of A minus position vector of B and cross F and uh, we need to simply take the dot product okay and uh, one important thing is that the resultant means uh, this force which we will be getting is independent of the point b means you can take point b anywhere here 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 anywhere the answer will remain the same now we will do one problem on the moment of force about an axis so this is your problem this is the cube and a force is applied along this direction fc okay and this ag is the diagonal so we need to calculate the moment of this force p about a in the first part then second part we need to calculate the moment about the edge a b about this edge then we need to calculate the moment about the diagonal a g and then we need to determine the perpendicular distance between the a g and f c okay so let us start this problem 
Now, first part is the moment about A. So, we have assumed the origin at this point. Okay, and these are our unit vectors i, j, and k. So, the vector r, f, a is because of our force is applied at f, right? So, if we want to find the moment about A, then we need to find this AF. Okay. So, AF will be equals to position vector of F minus position vector of A. Now, coordinates of F are x is a y is 0 and z is a while for a we have x 0 y is a and z is a okay so we can write f as a i plus a k minus Uh, we have a j plus a k so this k will cancel out then will r f a will be a i minus j as you can see here a i minus a j and you can take a as common now this f uh, sorry this uh, force is denoted by p so similarly uh, P is P will be equals to unit vector in the direction of FC and lambda and magnitude of P. Okay, now lambda you can calculate. Lambda will be equals to FC divided by magnitude of fc okay now magnitude is very simple you can have uh, a square plus a square while this on the top we have position vector of c so c is x is a y is a and z is zero okay so <clears throat> position vector of c minus position vector of a Okay, so this will be equals to a i plus a j minus a i plus a k. So this i will cancel out and then you got a j minus k okay so finally we will get p as 1 by under root 2 j minus k okay now when you need to find the moment then simply you take the uh, cross product RFA into P that is RFA is this and uh, P is this okay so when you take the cross product you will get this answer and you can take the cross product by simply writing this I J and K and uh, here you will have A minus A and 0 uh, this one and uh, here you have 
0 p by root 2 and minus p by root 2. So when you open the determinant, you will get this answer. Okay. Now next uh, B part of the problem is moment of P about AB. Okay. So AB is this means AB is in the direction of uh, x axis. So as we know that uh, if we want to calculate the moment along any axis, then we need to simply multiply the unit vector along that axis and the moment about a point A. Okay. So we need to simply carry out the dot product and we know that i dot i is 1 and i dot j is 0. So when we take a dot product only the components in i direction will remain that is this is i and this is ma. So this term will be 0, this term will be 0. So we get the term only in x direction that is mab will be equals to ap by root 2. <coughs> now this is the third part of the problem C. So moment of P along this diagonal. Okay. So again now we need to calculate this lambda. So lambda will be equals to Ag upon magnitude of Ag. This will be equals to position vector of G minus position vector of A and this is the magnitude. So when we do this, uh, you will get lambda vector as this. 1 by root 3 i minus j minus k and uh, ma you already know. Then you will need to take the simply the dot product which you can uh, this i dot i will be 1 and i dot j i dot i and uh, j dot uh, j and k dot k will be 1 while i dot j is equal to 0 j dot k will be 0 and i dot k is also 0. So by using the same rule we will get this answer that is mag will be equals to minus ap under root 6. Now the third part is the you need to calculate the perpendicular distance between fc and ag. So as you can see in this figure, this is the perpendicular distance. Okay. Now this AG lambda we have just calculated and it means unit vector along this direction and uh, uh, P we already know P. P is this P by root 2 J minus K and this we have just calculated. So if you take the dot product of these two vectors, then it will come out to be this p by root 6 0 minus 1 plus 1 and this is 0 okay so it means that this p and this lambda they are perpendicular because perpendicular of 2 means uh, if two vectors are perpendicular that is i and j then their dot product i and j is 0 okay this we know that so this uh, product is coming out to be zero. It means that these two vectors are perpendicular to each other. Okay. Now this moment uh, we know. And uh, this moment we can also calculate because we know that moment can be also calculated by the force into the perpendicular distance. Okay. So this is the force and this is the perpendicular distance. So we need to simply equate these two terms uh, then you will get d as uh, a by under root 6. So this is how we can solve uh, these type of problems. Okay.
Welcome dear students. In this video, I will discuss moment of a couple. So consider two forces. This force is F and another force minus F having the same magnitude and parallel line of action and opposite sense. So these two forces, they have the same magnitude and their line of action is parallel but their sense is opposite. So these two force form a couple. Now you can find the moment of the couple. So for that, suppose this is the force and uh, this force is applied at A and this RA is the position vector of point A. So we know that for any force, we can calculate the moment as R cross F. So for this force F, the moment will be Ra cross F. Similarly, the moment of uh, this force minus F can be calculated and uh, this will be Rb cross minus F because the direction of this force is opposite. So the sign is negative. Now we can open this uh, bracket so then you will obtain ra minus rb cross f because f is common and uh, from the vector mechanics you can know that r a minus rb is equals to r okay so this will be equals to r cross f and r cross f you know that it is the cross product so which is also equals to rf sine theta or if you calculate the r sine theta then that will be d so that will be equals to f d so this is how you can calculate the moment of the couple now this moment vector of the couple is independent of the choice of the origin of the coordinate axis because this vector r this does not depend on the origin. Origin can be anywhere. This vector will remain same, R vector, because this vector depends on the point of applications of the forces. So we can say that moment vector of the couple is independent of the choice of the origin. That is, it is a free vector, okay, because it does not depend on the origin. So it is a free vector and that can be applied at any point with the same effect, okay. So you can move this force uh, moment vector m anywhere and its effect will remain the same. Now suppose uh, there are two couples, okay. So this first couple, it is formed by the force F1 and minus F1 and the distance is D1. And another couple, this is formed by the force is F2 and minus F2 and the distance perpendicular and this parallel distance is d2 then these two couples will have equal moment vector if these conditions are satisfied first condition is f1 d1 equals to f2 d2 then second condition is the two couple lie in the parallel planes means this plane and this plane both these planes are parallel to each other and the third condition is the two couples have the same sense or tendency to cause rotation in the same direction. So if you look at this top one, so this will cause rotation in this direction. Okay. And this lower one will also cause the rotation in this direction. So we can say that they are uh, causing the rotation in the same direction. So we can say that these two couples are equal because all the conditions are satisfied. All the three conditions are satisfied. Now we look into the moment addition of the couples. So suppose we are having two couples. Uh, one couple is in the plane P1. So this is the plane P1, this one which contains these forces F1 and minus F1 and the moment of these forces are M1 equal to R cross F1 
where r is the displacement vector between point a and b similarly there is another plane p2 which is intersecting this plane p1 at point at this line which is uh, through ab so and uh, this p2 plane contains the forces f2 and minus f2 so again you can calculate the moment m2 which will be equals to r cross f2 okay now uh, these forces you can calculate the resultant of these forces f1 and f2 you can calculate r by parallelogram law of vector addition similarly the resultant of minus f1 and minus f2 will be minus r okay so this resultant r this is also forming a couple okay and that couple can be calculated as r cross capital r where r is the uh, this vector and displacement vector between point a and b and uh, this capital r is the resultant and then you can write like this because this capital r is the summation of these f1 and f2 so we can also write r cross f1 plus f2 now using uh, varignon's theorem uh, we can have this uh, capital m will be equal to r cross f1 plus r cross f2 now this r cross f1 is m1 and r cross f2 is m2 uh, m2 so we can say that these uh, the individual couples which is formed by the two forces f1 and f2 okay which um, by in two intersecting planes is uh, equals to the couple formed by the resultant okay so you can say that the sum of the two couples is also a couple okay because these are the two couples m1 and m2 so their sum is also a couple m that is equal to the vector sum of the two couples so like we can add two forces uh, f1 and f2 and we can get the resultant in the same way we can add two couples m1 and m2 and we can get the resultant of two couples and that is equal to the vector sum of the two couples in the same way we can add three couples four couples and so on now these couples can be represented by vectors so these are the forces in the first figure f1 and these two forces f and minus f they are forming this couple m and as we know that this uh, uh, couple is a free vector so we can place here it as origin or it can be placed here in this plane so its effect will remain same and now since this is a vector so we can break the uh, couple vector into the component vectors uh, so these are the three components mx my and mz in the x y and z direction and the couple vectors obey the law of addition of vectors so this we know that and third point is couple vectors are free vectors that is the point of application is not significant okay so this is very important we can move couple vectors as per our requirement and their effect will remain same and couple vectors may be resolved into component vectors now we will see the resolution of a force into a force and a couple so as you can see in this figure so this is the force F which is applied at point A and uh, this is the point O or uh, you can consider it as origin and this is the dis, uh, position vector of A which is represented by R. Now we can uh, resolve this force into a force and a couple for that what we can do uh, we can apply force F and minus F at this point. O. now because we have applied f and minus f so its effect will cancel out so uh, means its effect will remain same and now what uh, we can do uh, these two forces um, this this one and uh, this one 
they will form the couple so from this force this couple is formed and uh, this force we has shown as it is so what we have done here this is the single force okay now if we want to move this force to this point o so we can do um, this but we have to add one couple okay and that couple should be uh, this r cross f means the dis uh, displacement through which we are moving it okay so this is what written here force vector f cannot be simply moved to o so we cannot move it simply because if we move simply then its effect will change if we want that the effect will remain same then we have to add a couple okay so then we can move our force to another point so this is what written here attaching equal and opposite force vectors at o produces no net effect on the body and the three forces may be replaced by an equivalent force vector and a couple vector okay now in this uh, figure you can see again we are having a force f applied at a okay now uh, suppose uh, this force vector we can move here we have seen in the last slide and uh, this now again now suppose if we want to move from o to o dash okay then what we have to do so moving force f moving f from a to a different point o dash requires the addition of a different couple vector okay so this is your force f if you move here then the couple vector will be different and if you move at o dash then the couple vector will be different okay so here you are adding mo but here you have to add mo dash and this mo will be r cross f while mo dash will be r dash cross f and these two are related to each other means mo dash and mo dash are related to each other and mo dash will be mo plus s cross f where s is this distance between o and o dash okay so this is how these mo and mo dash are related uh, now the in conclusion moving the force couple system from o to o dash requires the addition of the moment of the force at o about o dash okay so we want to move the this system from o to o dash then we need we should add a moment this moment of force and uh, uh, from this okay and this is the displacement vector so s cross f this is the addition of the moment of the force at o about o dash so this we have to do then we can transform it so thanks for watching the video thanks everyone have a nice day welcome dear students in this video we will learn how to reduce a system of forces into a force and couple system so let us start so suppose this is the system of forces which is applied on a rigid body at different points so suppose this force f1 is applied at point a1 then this force f2 is applied at point a2 similarly f3 is applied at f3 and these are the position vectors of point a1 a2 and a3 okay so as we know as we have learned in the previous lecture that uh, you can reduce this force f1 into a force and couple system when you shift this force at point o so similarly we can do for all the three forces and we can reduce all the three forces at o so the second figure you can see that this f1 force is reduced to a force f1 plus moment m1 at o similarly for f2 and f3 
So from the figure, it is clear that a system of forces may be replaced by a collection of force couple systems acting at point O. Now uh, we are having say three different forces. So we can have a resultant of these three forces. So suppose that uh, resultant is represented by capital R. Similarly, we can find the resultant of all the moments M1, M2 and F3. So the force and couple vectors may be combined into a resultant force vector and a resultant couple vector. So this is how we can do this. Now one more thing we can do, suppose uh, now you want to move this force couple system to another point. So this we have also seen in the last uh, video that uh, we can move a force couple system to a different po uh, point and for that we just need to add a moment. So this is how we can do this. Suppose we want to move this force couple system from O to O dash and suppose this S is the displacement vector between O and O dash then our resultant will be a force R plus a moment M O dash and M O dash will be equals to M O plus the moment of this point O about O dash. Okay. Now the two systems of forces are equivalent if they can be reduced to the same force couple system. Suppose this is one system of the forces. Suppose we have another system and we can reduce both the system to a same force couple system. Then we can say that these two systems are equivalent to each other. Now we will see further reductions of a system of forces. Now suppose if the resultant force and couple at O are mutually perpendicular, they can be replaced by a single force acting along a new line of action. So if the force and the couple, they are mutually perpendicular. Uh, suppose this is your force. Okay. And this is your moment. And they are mutually perpendicular. So we can replace this system by a single force acting along a new line of action. Okay. Now the resultant force coupled system for a system of forces will be mutually perpendicular if. Okay, so if these three conditions are satisfied, then the system or force couple system we will get is mutually perpendicular to each other. So first case is the forces are concurrent. So if we are having three forces, say P, Q and S and they are passing through the same point A, that means that these forces are concurrent and these forces can be reduced to this situation. Okay, so means we can reduce these forces into a perpendicular force couple system. Similarly, if the forces are coplanar, means all the forces lies on the same plane, then again, this can also be reduced to this type of a system. And third point is if the forces are parallel. So if all the forces are parallel, then we can reduce this force system as well to a force and couple system that are perpendicular to each other. Now suppose a system of coplanar forces is reduced to a force couple system that is mutually perpendicular. Okay, so this is our initial force system. Now we have reduced this system into a force and couple system and this force and couple system they are mutually perpendicular to each other. Now we can move this uh, means we can uh, just transform this force couple system into a resultant force. Okay. 
So we can transpose, uh, transform this force R and couple system into a resultant force R. But for that, you have to move this force to a new line of action. So uh, suppose this is the initial line of action. And now your new line of action will be this. That is different from this. Okay, these two line of actions are different. Okay, so system can be reduced to a single force by moving the line of action of R until its moment about O becomes M O R. So this D you can calculate D as D should be equals to this moment divided by the force R. Okay. So this is the reverse which we have studied in the previous video that uh, we can <coughs> transform a force into a force couple system. We can do this. So here we are doing the reverse process. We are transforming a force and couple system into a force. Okay. So we can do this thing in terms of component also. Suppose this is our force couple system and now suppose you can reduce this force into two components Rx and Ry <coughs> sorry so we can reduce this uh, system into uh, like this means we can move these uh, two components here so this uh, system means uh, two components rx and ry plus moment is reduced to a force system which is having a component rx and ry and similarly we can do in the y direction also so here we have moved the move the uh, resultant force in the x direction and here we have moved the resultant force in y direction and we can calculate the magnitude to which we have to move the force so x is equals to moment divided by ry and here y is the moment divided by rx so this is the relation basically so thanks for watching the video thanks everyone